Yeah, Father Seamus Enright, um, we have been hearing um, about the crisis in Ukraine and uh, can you tell us some of the work that you've been doing here? Well, we've been working really at two levels really. One has been fundraising um, for Ukraine and we got really good support from the Post when we were doing that. So we raised just a little bit more than €600,000 and we were able to send that directly to the Redemptorists in Ukraine and also to the Polish and Slovak Redemptorists who are working with the refugees along the border. So the money comes into us and goes directly um, to, to help the people of the Ukraine. So that has been, for I thought when we started the appeal, we might raise €50,000 and I would have been delighted if we had, but it just grew and grew. And as I say, it went, it's still trickling in, but you know, the, the, the bigger appeal is over, but it was a little bit over €600,000 and it has done great good in Ukraine because the Redemptors are on the ground there and they've opened up the churches and the monasteries as sanctuaries for people. They've taken in orphans um, in one of the communities. They have a community bakery and they've upped the production of bread for because they've all these orphans and people staying with them. So it, it was a very generous response and we were delighted. Then we were a little bit involved, a little bit in the re welcoming of, of the refugees to Limerick. We have two Ukrainian Redemptor sisters here with us, Sister Antonia and Sister Justina. So they go to class in the morning, they've been learning English, but they've been quite involved, especially with Linda Ledger's centre in St. Lilia's. We've had very significant involvement there, but we have a, the sisters have a gathering on Thursday afternoons. We're going to do two special celebrations in Ukrainian during the Novena. Um, we've made some funding available. Now the money that came in for the Ukrainian appeal, that 600,000 all went directly to Ukraine and none of it was spent here. But the Perpetual Health Fund that Limerick people support set aside 100,000 euro um, to be used to support Ukrainians who came to Limerick. So we've been using that to support Doris, who've done doing amazing work on the ground. Uh, Midwest Simon in the beginning who were providing food. So there are lots of little things that nobody else is providing for. Like this morning we had a request from the people in Kilfinnan that the refugees who are in Kilfinnan would like to do some social activities. They'd like to go horse trekking and mountain bike riding and go to the seaside for a day. And there isn't funding available for those kind of projects so we were able to make the funding available for that and we were able to buy toiletries for the Zero Shop and there's a group of volunteers now working with the Ukrainians who are coming to the university accommodation out around UL and they really arrive penniless uh, with just the clothes they're wearing. Now after a week or two it begins to improve because they get signed up for their social welfare entitlements but in the beginning you know the needs are, are, are very acute. Uh, one of the groups that came to Limerick recently, IPAS, which is the government agency that sends people around the country and finds accommodation for them and isn't always very compassionate, you know, um, but they, I think what people were getting was a 10 euro a day voucher. Now you wouldn't go far on 10 euros a day for two weeks to get yourself started up. So we've been able to provide some supplementary help in those sort of situations. But of course, it's the people of Limerick who provided the help because they give us the money and we manage the money on their behalf. You know, as you mentioned, these people arriving penniless. I've heard stories of people arriving in their bare feet. Yes, and they three flops. Nothing. Nothing, absolutely nothing when they arrive. And as I say, after a couple of weeks, it improves. Because, and one of the things I'd have to say, Megan, is I think the people working with Limerick City Council, with Tusla, with the HSE, all those local agencies here have been wonderful. I think they've really risen to the challenge. They're working, I think, way beyond the call of duty. I'm on the community forum and we have a WhatsApp group and I see people messaging each other late at night, early in the morning, at the weekend. So there's huge good work being done on the ground. I think IPAS leaves a lot to be desired and the local communities have responded um, very well. So there is a lot of support, but people do really arrive. People do really arrive penniless and they need very basic things. And what we have to remember, of course, is how traumatized these people are. They've lost everything. And now they might be living in a hotel room or emergency accommodation. And I think they're grateful for that, but they need, you need more. You need little comforts and little bits of celebration and little bits of joy in your life as well. So we're, as I say, going to have two special novena celebrations in Ukrainian and also Sister Antonia and Sister Justina are going to do summer camps 
for the Ukrainian children during the early part of July here in the Redemptress because um, they've been going to school and that's great because they're occupied during the day but if you're living in a hotel room or in emergency accommodation and the whole family is in one room the summer is going to prove very difficult and I know Limerick Youth Service is planning a lot of activities and I think groups like West Limerick Resources and Ballyhora and the Paul Partnership here in Limerick are all really working very hard on the ground to deliver good services. If the people of Limerick are watching right now and think I want to get involved or want to help out, I mean, if it's simple as donating maybe some proper shoes and toiletries, how can I get involved? Yeah. Well, I suppose really people can donate. Um, I suppose they could donate here. <laughs> I'd be guilty for saying that. Um, but they could donate here and we'd make sure. If they want to donate to the Ukraine, of course, they can continue sending financial contributions. If they wanted to help their Ukrainian refugees in Limerick, they could specify that that's what their donations were for, or they could say, now, I don't think people want clothes anymore. Um, there's been a surfeit of clothes, I think, but we really need toiletries and children's games. Um, the children, I think, are bored and need things to occupy them. So toiletries, toiletries are especially welcome. And they could drop them in here and we'll make sure they go to the right place.